finding x-intercepts using square root. Uh, before we jump into actually finding the x-intercepts, there's a few things we need to do first. First is to talk about a couple of uh, definitions or understand a few concepts. The first one is that the x-intercept, the x-intercept of a graph of a function is the point, or it could be multiple points, where the graph intersects the x-axis. Pretty simple, pretty similar to y-intercept that we looked at with our uh, linear functions in the beginning of quadratics. Second thing we want to look at is we want to remember that the y-value of every point on the x-axis is zero. Okay, And that helps us to be able to solve. So given the equation of any function, we find the x-intercept by putting a zero or substituting zero in for y and then solving for x. And that's basically what you're going to be doing in this entire lesson. Is you're going to be substituting zero in for y and solving for x using square root. Okay. So before we can jump into doing that, we need to look at um, and take a review of the algebraic um, process for solving an equation that has a square in it. So we can take the square root. Okay. So that's the next thing we're going to do. All right. So in this example, we want to solve this equation. All right. So it says solve 3x squared minus 27 equals 0. What you want to do in any square root problem that has square in it, you want to get the x squared or the part that's squared part by itself. Sometimes you're going to see it where you have a parentheses with the squared in it and then that's the part you would want to get by itself. It could have x plus 1 or something in it, you would want to get this whole part all by itself. Okay, so let's go ahead and work this problem out that I have here for us. Alright, so it says solve 3x squared minus 27 equals 0. So the first thing we got to do is we got to get rid of our addition or subtraction by doing the inverse operation. So since 27 subtracted, we're going to add 27. Those will make those cancel. We have to do it to the other side of the equation in order to keep it balanced. So those go away, and we're left with 3x squared equals 27. Now remember, we're still trying to get this x squared part by itself. So since it's multiplied by 3, the inverse of that is dividing by 3. So we'll divide both sides by 3. Those 3's are canceled, and you're left with x squared equals 27 divided by 3 is 9. All right? And then the, now here's the part that you probably didn't do in Algebra 1. We're going to, to get rid of the squared. The inverse of squaring something is taking the square root. So we're going to take the square root of both sides. So the square root of x squared is just x. But now here's the part that's a little bit different. If I want to know, remember, if you'll remember that square rooting something and then squaring something when I have x squared equals 9, what this means is what can I multiply by itself and get 9? Well, most of you remember 3 times 3, that gives us 9. But also, negative 3 times negative 3 is going to give us 9. So there's two solutions to this, 3 and negative 3. So what we do is we say plus or minus 3. And that's going to be our solution when we solve this. x equals plus or minus 3. You could write it as x equals 3 or x equals negative 3. But most of the time we just write it in that form right there. Okay? Alright, so now that we've reviewed that, we can go into find, actually finding the x-intercept using square root. So that's our next step. So if you remember back, we said that we find the x-intercept or intercepts by substituting 0 in for y and then solving for x. So that's what we're going to do in this problem. So here's our problem. It says find the x-intercepts of y equals negative 2 times x plus 5 squared plus 32. So I'm going to put a 0 in for y. That was our first step. 
and then we want to solve for x. Alright, so we're going to go through the same steps we just did. We're going to try to get this x by itself. And actually, we can't do that, though, until we get the part that's squared by itself. So I have to get rid of the 32, the adding 32, by taking its inverse, and I have to get rid of multiplying by negative 2 by, getting, by taking its inverse. Okay, so if you remember, the inverse of adding 32 is subtracting 32. And i got to subtract 32 from the left side also. And that gives me negative 32 equals negative 2 times x plus 5 squared. Now i still got to get this the squared part by itself, so I still have this negative 2 out in front. It's multiplied by the parentheses, so I have to divide by negative 2. And then divide the left side by negative 2 also. 32, negative 32 divided by negative 2 is 16, and these two negative 2's cancel, and I'm left with x plus 5 squared. Alright, so now, since I've got the squared part by itself, I'm going to take the square root of both sides, and that leaves me with the square root of 16, remember, is going to be plus or minus 4, and then this side, when I take the square root and square, that just leaves me with x plus 5. So now I have to solve this equation, and it's actually two equations, so I'm going to write it as two equations and solve each of them. I have 4 equals x plus 5, or negative 4 equals x plus 5. I'll draw a line there to separate these. Alright, so let's go ahead, we'll subtract 5, subtract 5, and get x equals negative 1, and we'll subtract 5, subtract 5, and get x equals negative 9. So there's our two solutions, and we can get two solutions because it's quadratic. So that's how we would write the solutions there. Right, now we found these x values. They aren't quite our, our answers because, if you remember, these are x-intercepts, and x-intercepts are point on the graph. When we write points on the graph, we have to write them as ordered pairs. So the x for this one, this first one, is negative 1, and if you remember, we started this problem by substituting 0 in for y. So our y is going to be 0 for both of the points. So we have negative 1, 0 and negative 9, 0. And that is your final answer for your intercepts. Now when you work your assignments we're probably going to have you graph these um, on the graph. So remember they'll be on the x-axis. If there were any questions with this video go back and rewind and watch it again and uh, make sure you complete the WISC, and we'll see you in class to do some problems on this.